Yeah, uh, again, and, uh, good afternoon to everyone. So, uh, before I actually start, I would like to love what Sai has actually you know, uh, hinted in his uh, talk that mindset is important. So, today, basically, what I am going to uh, share with you is from a design perspective what a mindset can, can be and how actually, you know, it can actually impact your organization and come up with really, really great products. Now, why? Uh, as you can see the title, right? prepared today for future of design. So we'll be touching upon the concept of design as a you know, part of the operations. How many of you have heard the term design ops or days ops? Okay, it's a relatively new term uh, that is uh, making rounds on the internet. Like, you know. So it's basically a mindset, uh, uh, like how we can actually <coughs> Uh, come up with proper operations, we can define operations for the design, for the organization, so that you know, uh, it can actually correlate and you know, complement DevOps. So before I go into all those uh, things, let's start with the very basic thing, because we are not talking about design. So let's see I mean, what design is. Basically, you know, uh, the traditional uh, thought, like you know, the belief is, a design is being treated like a discipline. Okay, this guy can actually you know, paint something good, or maybe he can create a new UI that looks really nice. So we see uh, design from the you know, point of view like it might be something uh, related to a discipline where it relates to the look and feel of something you do. But if you see in a broader sense, design is mostly it's not only limited to what actually and how it looks or uh, feels. It's more about like how it actually functions. So uh, I think you know, I'm just uh, starting with the typical quotation from you know, Steve Jobs. Uh, design is how it works. So if we see from you know, the multiple you know, angles to uh, how we try to define design, right? So one of the angles comes from the you know, uh, very popular uh, uh, approach that we follow, that's design thinking. So from design thinking angle, if you try to uh, see design, so it's like you know, it's like a creative problem solving. So if you are creatively trying to solve a problem and trying to solve it, you are actually the process that you are going through is design. So in that broader sense, actually what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to analyze what that design of some days of is and I'm trying to you know I'll, I'll be you know explaining what are those you know high level aspects of day jobs and how, how exactly you know it matters to your organization and you know uh, if on a ground level, what exactly you can do to make sure that you know, your organization actually adapts to So basically, if we agree that you know uh, design is all about like you know, creative problem solving, that means the coder who is trying to code, right? He is writing problems. He, he fails to right? Like, so he is putting you know his creativity at work so that he can put it in the right place to make your product work. So in the similar line, when a product manager actually tries to come up with some kind of reason, right? he is trying to get insight from the market, from the user, and then he is trying to come up with, okay, this will actually work. Right? So this, he is trying to be his creativity onto you know, uh, his area, his domain, and trying to solve it. So in that sense, if we see all the goals are actually designed. So in that sense, if we see that in any organization, all those business development, UX, UI related things, right? So all of them, we can actually you know, will fall into this definition. So if that happens, then design is basically the common thread you can see here that will connect everything. So it's like this. So when we are talking about day jobs, that means we are trying to come up with you know some kind of you know, guidelines or maybe the best practices. What you can do to make sure whatever we are trying to do the way we are actually trying to solve our, you know, uh, I mean, creatively solve our problems, right? How we can do that. So there are so many actually uh, uh, approaches available there. Like we follow different type of processes. Like let's say as I like, implement from the process point of view, we are also following, let's say, design thinking is actually you know, leading the you know, many organizations. Right? And then there is user-centered design, and someone can actually start with something like lean, because okay, I can start with only three or four persons, I'll go with lean, right? So there are so many processes are there. 
So when we are talking about day jobs, it also means that we are actually touching upon all those processes in certain way, so that it makes sense. We can do things. We can actually you know design things in a seamless way for the organization to create uh, you know many new products. So basically, then what is uh, so when we are actually talking about the organization, right? so I just said right now. Because all these personal parts of any organization yeah, is actually falling under design, right? So any organization can be treated as a design organization. So there is no organization in the world which actually is not implementing design in their daily life, like a daily work program, to solve some problem, to come up with a product or the services, right? So in that sense, every organization is a design organization. So in any organization, if we are talking, right, it's all about the different type of operations that happen within the organization. So let's say we are following some process, right? So there is always certain type of communication that happens. Let's say uh, I'm an interesting designer, I talk to my product manager to get some requirements based on that I can come up with some kind of requirements. As you like, that is the scenario. So I go and I meet at a role. So mine is one role, then his is another role, right? And we are actually having some kind of feedback loop. I am providing some inputs, I am getting some you know, uh, feedbacks coming. It's the same way for the other side, right? So in that sense, if you notice, right, there are multiple roles actually that are involved in any of, any of those organizations. Starting from product management, developer, architects, user uh, researcher, user experience, and you know, visual designer, tester. So you see, those are different roles. And in each of the process that we actually follow, basically what is happening is, we are having some kind of you know, uh, process, uh, uh, the feedback loops that goes through different roles. So, day jobs basically what it does is, it helps you finding and enabling the search and the most effective feedback loop. So, it's like, let's say, uh, we are trying to come up with a new product and let's say, the product manager has some vision of a new mobile phone. Whether you will go, and do a uh, district study in the market to get some user insights, or you will just do a you know, conduct one design thinking session in the organization. That depends on what is what kind of feedback loop is trying to follow. So it is actually the possibility of uh, feedback loop that you know the different roles are uh, going through. So design jobs or the day jobs basically helps you finding out what is that right feedback loop of sequence that you need to follow. So that you know you reach your you know uh, you have you know reach your goals effectively in a certain time. So how exactly this is like you know big gap, but the thing is how exactly it happens in the, on the ground. Let's see. Before that, we need to keep in mind that they just itself is a mindset, just like the mindset of you know, DevOps. So if we see DevOps, we, whenever we talk about DevOps, so we the immediate thing that comes to our mind is like okay, automation, CI, CD, we will do like you know, and then we also talk about all those you know technologies that supports it, right? But then basically, if we really see DevOps is a mindset where you know it actually tries to remove the waste from the process. It defines repeatable process that you can actually you know replicate over the period and you know uh, they have to be reliable, and you can automate certain things, right? So uh, and basically you get the feedback. You, you make sure that your feedback loop is actually solved, so that you take some action on that. So this is basically the you know the DevOps mindset. But if we see, yeah. So uh, so basically uh, from the DevOps mindset, if we see, then there are certain things. Mostly the pieces in the product life cycle, the DevOps touches is like you build, you deploy, you test. So that kind of you know cycle you actually follow. Then the initial aspect of the any product life cycle is okay. Uh, in the actual organization, right? So we do idea, we do design, or uh, maybe in the you know traditional sense of design uh, in that sense, right? So those two blocks are never touched, or maybe even if it's touched, it's not actually basically done. So uh, to do, I mean, uh, overcome that basically, they just actually help you to move to the next level. Take DevOps mindset to the next level. What it does is, it's no more limited uh, uh, to the de uh, development till the deployment you know, cycle. What it does is basically, it connects the vision till the you whatever you are doing. So 
One example is like you said, uh, there was a need to uh, build an I mean, maybe a mobile phone and you deliver that in the market, right? So when the user is actually, you know, having it, he's buying it, basically he's getting the delivered product. So when you build that and you deliver it, from build to deliver, you can follow my services to be a you know, technology oriented, which is DevOps. But when he is getting, he might say, oh, okay, this doesn't look good. I, mean, I, 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 I was expecting it to you know, feel like iPhone. But you know, th those kind of aspects that we actually see, it's not something which is concrete or which is something logical. That might have actually come in the initial phase when the product vision was created. So how you can connect from that product vision to the experience that the user gets at the end is actually, you know, uh, is what we are trying to solve. So basically, end-to-end -end feedback loop is what we, you know, uh, we try to address, and definitely it's all about human aspects. So what, uh, how the product actually impacts emotionally like a person, right? It mostly touches upon the areas which is more than the quantifiable, you know, attributes that we are trying to see. So if you take any domain, like one example is like, uh, let's say a test. I mean, a testing scenario. So typically, if I go and I try to conduct a QA, right? So basically, what uh, we see is like we can do something like you know, render testing, code quality checks, and maybe you know, the functional resources in you know, the runtime, in the compile time errors, and those kind of things come, right? And then, in the uh, uh, severity of the issues that we typically see, when the four and five are mostly cosmetic errors, which you will get when you know, mostly when client is actually you know, uh, doing the UAT. So at that time of uh, test, right, you won't find anything like, okay, there is some bug in the code or, you know, some compiled error. It's not like that. But mostly what, you know, the, your customer actually says is, oh, okay, it, it works good, but, you know, I wanted some Facebook and W experience. But, you know, that is never defined. That is something, you know, human. So he is connecting to his experience. So basically, the, those kind of aspects which is related to the human, right, so those are, you know, uh, uh, at the right hand side if you see. So like you know, cosmetic issues, maybe usability issues, accessibility issues, I'm not able to use it, or maybe something like user feedback and those kind of things. So if you see from the left hand side to the right hand side, it's like a human brain, where you know logical things are on the left and you know, more emotional things are on the right. So it's, it's on that angle. So in DevOps, mostly we are more focused on this area, at least the automation and the technology are actually helping us to really do a good job. So what we are trying to do in the job is basically we are trying to do a little bit other, cover the other aspect also. So, so basically, I think this, this diagram actually explains that. So these blocks are actually like vision and design. If you see, they, they are mostly on the software aspect of whatever we are trying to know, develop in a product. But in a DevOps, basically from development, deployment and testing, so we cover all this. So in DevOps, basically, it's a super safe kind of thing. It's taking DevOps to the next layer in the terms of privacy. So basically, you can say like, so anyway, all these are things. <laughs> then, how do you do it? So where do you start? Let's say you are running a startup, then you know, you, or maybe you are running one, a team in an organization, then where do you start actually? So let's see. So step one is basically, is about, Know, discovering touch points. So touch points is, as I said, like in every organization, on all the uh, processes and uh, the kind of you know uh, operations that happen on different domains. Right? So everywhere there, and there is some point where one role is talking to the other, or maybe uh, any. I mean, I mean so let's say I'm logging into a uh, project management software. Right? So I, that is a touch point where I, as a project manager, as a role. I am actually talking to a system where the discipline is about project management. So, or maybe if I am talking to a product manager, I have a role, that is another role. Uh, uh, so, uh, a product manager is a different role. I, I am an interaction designer, I have a different role. I am from a different discipline, he is from a different discipline. When we talk, certain things happen. So, basically, uh, that we need to explore. And those are, each of them are actually one touch point. So the first step is to find the touch points where you can actually, you know, uh, uh, remove the waste or you can improve into highs or you can optimize, right? So how you can actually then identify uh, 
those touch points. So basically the angle is like, you, know, you can apply design. So design thinking is, as I think most of you know, right, it's mostly about you know, empathizing, defining, and finding out the problem, and then you know, ideating and finding out the solutions, or the solutions, the set of solutions, or the options, rather than pinpointing ones. So, so that you can quickly go over that you can go over that you know, idea. So basically the goal of DevOps uh, is to apply design thinking to grow our own process. To find out in an organization, if let's say tomorrow uh, we want to improvise whatever the process we are following for the design or in the broader sense, then we need to apply design thinking to our own process to understand and see where are those touch points? So basically it will help you to find that out and also to find out some solutions to that. And then in design thinking there are multiple you know, uh, tools that actually helps you. But one thing we need to remember is in finding out the touch point, those touch points can be anything. It may be a role to role, kind of like let's say uh, a PM role to a visual designer role or a QA role or an architect role. Right? So they, those roles might be complicated or having some kind of feedback. Or it might be uh, discipline to discipline. Let's say he is a product manager and another guy is actually advocate. So basically if they both the, are talking, it's basically two disciplines are actually under that feedback. Similarly, if let's say in a user researcher is talking about some kind of methodology to implement in the market to get you know, the uh, feedbacks, right? or maybe the insights, he is talking about some frameworks within that. So the ontology of touch points are basically, you know, it's identify what kind of you know, those touch points can be. Those we need to understand and identify so that you know, we can build some kind of you know, solutions that will help us to remove those points. So uh, in one of my book actually I uh, wrote about one tool called Metal Process Diagram. Basically this is in uh, when you actually use design thinking you can uh, come up with so many you know uh, methodology and tools. One of them is actually like you know let's say you use your mind mapping and you know you can use your uh, personal thing right? so similarly this is one where you actually try to map different touch points in an organization for specific process that is happening so basically the first step is to understand what is happening in your organization based on that you can optimize so you need to find out what are those touch points so uh, one example can be like let's say this is a uh, PM uh, character right? so so each of them are actually actors, the possible actors. So product manager is actually talking to one interaction designer. Basically, these are the one touch point that we are trying to define. So the feedback that is coming from here is you know, passing back. So whatever is happening, the outcome of this will be taken to the next step. <laughs> so maybe what will happen is maybe uh, product manager is actually talking about some you know vision, like this I am envisioning this kind of product. And he is saying, okay, this kind of you know interaction we can come up with that. Then, <coughs> The next thing is, interaction designer may not actually understand, okay, that certain technology is involved. I need to know what are those, you know, uh, what is the feasibility and all. So he might actually connect with some marketing. So if you see, that was one touch point. Then the second touch point was between those two goals. So basically, this map, uh, this tool actually helps you to map things like this. One sample is like, let's say, the product manager is actually here. And he is trying to do some kind of marketing analysis. So basically one of the options. So the idea is you need to understand at each role, at each discipline, what are those options with that person. You need to have that so that it is more clear. And what? Because from there only you can know what you can remove, what you can optimize and those things. So this is basically the house under a domain like market analysis. So now you can say like you know the, uh, there can be multiple you know, areas, the customer analysis, maybe product uh, portfolio analysis, and those, those kind of you know, uh, you know, mechanisms that might be using methodologies. So maybe this, so now what happened is this PO actually tried to uh, use category attractiveness. So that is one of the methodologies in product management. So he is trying to follow this. So now uh, within that there are multiple tools like Cortos type, principle, sort, this, that. So now he used a analysis. So if you see this is how you know it's now uh, one domain is actually falling into the other domain is the marketing research guy. So the person who is marketing research guy, he will be having a domain similar to this. So this is basically the overlap of that. So this is how you try, I mean, so this, uh, the PPT actually helps you to uh, give 
future lies how exactly you know, uh, what are the options there, how those communications are happening, so that you identify the touch points and then you try to solve it. So, <coughs> so this one is actually showing like you know, easier way how you can do that using some arrow and uh, normal mic and everything. So one example, let's see. So uh, here is a scenario. So uh, in a traditional design sense, uh, there is interaction design. So planning is done. Interaction design, then, then he did some, I mean, yeah, she did some venture. And then visual designer did that. Came up with some kind of network of so many people actually reviewed them, they transferred that to UI developer. Now if you see in this kind of scenario, there are four roles are set. I'm just taking three of them, I'm just explaining the viewer for the time being. And each of them are actually using different tools. And now all of these are actually trying to follow some kind of you know, design system guideline, maybe style guide and those kind of things. And developer is also referring to some kind of sample tool. So this is a current scenario. So if we try uh, this, uh, this kind of you know, uh, touch point, so basically the touch points we saw. So through design thinking, what we can get is like the ideas and case, you can get the solution like okay. Based on that, can we actually have only you know uh, one role who can provide some kind of output that it can actually be transferred to UI developers? So that in between those two roles can be removed. You know, it's just a hypothetical step. So interesting design that comes up in a wireframes. Can we use that wireframe directly as in the production development UI code? Can we do that? So that's the kind of solution. You may not have the actual technology, but it's the kind of solution that came up. So what it happens is each case when we are actually trying to reduce one role, we are saving some time and the effort and maybe the complexity we are trying to reduce. So now what will happen is basically let me know, let's see what is the stake. So once you know those touch points, the way we saw, so basically these three things we try to do. One is like can we optimize those each touch points? So do something like maybe using different tools or something, can we actually make it faster or those kind of can we automate certain things? Can we automate uh, whatever happening from one road to the other? And the third thing is, can we reduce the number of touch points that we have? Like the one we saw. So now what happens is basically, you end up with some kind of solution that you saw, then you try to find out something like, what is the solution from the technology angle? So now you are putting that, uh, you are replacing your you know, touch points with value you know, parts. Value is actually the, the, the parts you replace for your know, natural body parts. So basically it's talking about like you know, how then you need to think okay, now I have a solution, can I actually translate that through technology? So that might something look like this. I mean it's just a hypothetical you know. So now I have some kind of like pattern guy is a design system uh, from that. So there may be certain persons, so that widgets we can use. So let's say user input comes and then we have some single source file, so multiple tools we don't want. Then what will happen in that way? Because the design system has the widget, can you use directly that to create wireframe and export visual design and use in the code? So that is the whole goal uh, uh, that actually a technical translation of what solution we got there. So now looking at that, the actual solution, right? So this is the uh, upper wire actually, it's not actual. Uh, this is uh, uh, we created from some uh, uh, last year from a screen. It's a concept. So where uh, you see, the user can actually come into uh, some kind of UI where you can actually drag the patterns and drop it because those patterns are already repeated. You can actually de develop some kind of code that can be used. Later on, you can actually you know, uh, create things out of that. Yeah, so this is a concept that is in access. So, like the person is actually you know, trying to drag something, the reads are there. It's fully, he's hiding that and he's tracking some you know, patterns from the uh, video panel. Right? Then he will export that as a code. So this is one of the solutions that we saw in the example one, where, where uh, there is one process that is running in the organization and then we identify the touch points. Then we come, come up with some kind of solution and we translated that into technology. So basically it was like all about like, can we automate you know, reduce the touch points and that, that is the whole purpose of this example. Basically he is thinning it here now and he is exporting that as some kind of you know, code. So uh, the next thing is, let's say we see another example and then I will close basically. So th in this example we will touch upon a little you know, more than the traditional design. So here we try to make 
make a connect from the design till the you know uh, the user acceptance test. So like uh, both the ends will try to connect. So in an ideal case, this is I call beta beta studio. So it was a concept that we came up with uh, last year in uh, Red Hat Idea Incubation. So uh, basically, what happens is it tries to conceptualize an ideal system that will try to gather all the feedbacks from each stage of the product and try to pose it. So maybe different goals can actually get those feedbacks, or maybe automated tracking you can do, and you can pass it. There can be like you know, all our you know, uh, new technologies like you know, machine learning and deep learning, artificial all those you can apply and come up with solutions. So this is an ideal kind of you know uh, possibility. Right? So if we try to see here, what I want to highlight here is, let's say this is a big user kind of thing. So if we want to try to solve this kind of problem, then we need to break that into multiple areas. So what is like, can we get some design benchmarks? So if you see, this is all related to those aspects which are not, you know, logically or, you know, quantifiable things. It's more on the side, like, you know, if something I'll show you, red or white, if some people will say, okay, red looks good. Some people will say, white looks good. Because it's, there's nothing wrong to each of those answers. So it's similar to that. So design benchmark has to be there. So somehow you need to bring some kind of benchmark against which you need to compare. Automated tracking maybe you know you can track in the real time what is that you know maybe you should feedback or maybe whatever thing that you can actually compare with benchmark. And there are other things like your feedback you can be other and then there will be some set of standards you know running your application, like you know accessibility and other things. But then this is how you can actually do so uh, uh, this example actually. And so, so in uh, the handling process, I created this prototype. This is representing the past box where you get some design benchmark. Uh, so what happens is, like you know, many de designers they do uh, design in Photoshop, Illustrator, Illustrator, and those kind of things. So what it does is basically you drop your file and it tries to come up with a style guide in matter of no minute. So basically, it gets you all those details against which you can actually compare. So uh, this is like this. I mean, so basically, you have to find
basically there, if you see all those aspects are actually highlighted. So, what I feel is, day jobs organization, the organization that actually implements design organization, uh, day jobs, basically they are open organizations. So, I, I, I would suggest like, you know, you should go with this book and, you know, have a, uh, give a try to this book. Because what we need, because the reason is, whatever we saw, this culture, that is the step zero. So, we covered step one and step two, but this is actually step zero. So, basically, it's like we need to fix our culture. We have to be prepared uh, for all those, you know, uh, risk taking, innovation, and those things. So, we have to fix our culture. Then the next step is basically, you know, those two things, you know, I can, you know, find the touch points, the process we talked about, and then you apply the best of this kind of technology aspect. Well. So, that is uh, the 10,000 foot, you know, overview of day jobs and design and how we should actually do it. Coming for the coming times, I hope you enjoy this. And this is my Twitter ID. You can get in touch, and more details you can get. Uh, I am running a you know blog, Digital Star Time. You can always find all these dates and the related groups in there. Thank you. Any questions? I will be happy. Thank you. 